Okay, so thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. Uh, this uh, webinar is to talk about the Drupal South Splash Awards entry um, and to answer any questions you've got. Um, so to start off, I would like to say Womanjika, uh, welcome from Wurundjeri country, um, which is where I'm positioned. I know that we're kind of spread out throughout Australia, but that's where, where I am at the moment. Um, before I start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we meet on today and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, I would also like to extend my respect to, um, to Aboriginal, Torres Strait, Maori people who might be joining us today. Um, I would also like to do a special uh, shout out to our award sponsor, Einstar. So Mike's on the call today uh, from Einstar. Uh, we cannot run these sorts of events without um, our valued uh, sponsors and supporters. So we're very grateful and indebted to you, Mike, and your fabulous team for taking on the responsibility of sponsoring this event. So we've got quite a lot to go through today. Uh, this is our agenda. We've got about 30 minutes allocated um, and we'll do our best to cover the following topics. Um, so we've got the why enter, the categories, judging and uh, judge, judges, um, the award process, what you can submit, preparing your submission, submission tips, important information, and then we should have some time at the end for any Q&A. Um, so the Drupal South Committee are very excited to be continuing with the Splash Awards for Australia and New Zealand. So we, we did the first one uh, last year um, at Wellington um, and I think we all thought it was a great uh, uh, outcome um, and certainly Mike and I certainly enjoyed running it. So we're, we're back again for this second year. Um, the awards have been running since 2018 and have been uh, an international program championed by Drupal. Um, and since 2019, the awards have been held annually with winners being announced at the Drupal cons in Europe um, and the US. And that, so, and as I just said before, we're now in our second year here for Australia and New Zealand. Um, the Drupal South Committee continue uh, with their commitment to making this an annual event, uh, with the event being aligned with each Drupal South conference. So, uh, oh, sorry, my um, my my. So anyway, so sorry, my 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 notes are not aligning with my slides. So my apologies. Um, but uh, I guess some important information on your submission. There's some things that have changed a tiny bit from from last year. Um, so this year you can submit in all categories. We're not putting a cap on that. So previously you were only able to submit to two categories. But, and you can have up to two entries in each category. Again, uh, this year there is uh, no cost for the entry and of course the award ceremony will be at the conference and it will be an event not to be missed and that will be on the Wednesday evening. Mark, I think that's the 20th, is that right? Yep, that's right. Perfect. So why enter? Uh, this is a great opportunity to showcase the best works you have completed in the past year. Um, the trophy on its own is pretty awesome and will awesome and amazing in your office on the mantelpiece. Um, Drupal South will be promoting the winners actively as part of the process of the awards um, and participating in the awards may provide a vehicle for you to help build business um, and showcase your Drupal skills. Um, so last year, um, I was actually working at Morphed where Amber's working at the moment and we certainly have rolled in uh, the win for that award uh, in the not-for-profit category as part of our tender documentation and we found that that was a really useful way to, to validate uh, the work and our expertise in the field. So the categories uh, this year, so you'll see here that um, I think last year we had six categories and we've, we've drilled that down now to five. Um, so we've got the corporate category, which is websites that serve um, as online identities for business organizations or professional individuals. The design UX category, uh, which is websites and experiences where visual design is intended to be beautiful, emotional and appeal to the senses. Um, the education category, 
which is sites that are educational, promote education or provide online curriculum or education services. The government category, which is websites and platforms developed for any level of government. Political movements also fall within this category. And then finally, the non-for-profit category, which is websites for charities and charitable organisations whose primary purpose is helping people or other worthy causes. So judges, um, so all submissions will be reviewed by a professional and impartial panel, essentially members of the Drupal community who excel in their fields of expertise. Um, any panel members who have any conflict of interest in reviewing a submission will recuse themselves from voting on any submissions in that track. So for example, if you are a judge and uh, your agency is submitting, uh, you will recuse yourself from, uh, from the, judging that specific uh, award entry. So judges are volunteers and their identities are not revealed until after the award ceremony. Individual judge scores are kept confidential. Um, and I'd just like to do a small call out now, like if you've got an interest in being involved with the Splash Awards, it would be great. We're about to do a call out for judges. Um, so keep an eye out on your emails um, because it would be great to have more people involved in this activity. So the judging criteria, um, so concept and strategy, um, the plan behind the website, um, is the concept clear, unique and consistently implemented? Does the website tell a story? Um, does the chosen strategy and the final elaboration of the product fit the objectives that served as the starting point of the project? Uh, you also, your submission will be um, judged on design. So that's everything that is visible to the end user, including UX, motion and visual design on both desktop and mobile. Judges will be looking for design that is of a high quality fits the target audience and supports the message that needs to be conveyed. Uh, another judging criteria is technology, and that's for websites that will be assessed against their speed and whether they function properly. In this criteria, the Drupal application is also being considered. Has the build followed Drupal standards? Is the implementation innovative? Integrations with third-party systems is also considered. The business case, in this criteria, we are looking for a positive business outcome for the website. Has the website increased sales, lowered costs, provided a better brand experience, etc.? Do the analytics from the site show that the goals have been achieved or even exceeded? And then the final judging criteria is community value. So Drupal, um, as an uh, open source platform um, owes its existence to the community behind it. So all submissions will be judged on the value the website returns to this community. This could be code, for example, modules published on drupal.org, but also indirect contributions such as uh, spectacular case studies and well-known brands that use Drupal, which contribute to the marketing of Drupal uh, in the digital ecosystem. So the process, um, so basically uh, you can see here that uh, the, the um, submission call out is open now um, and we're in the info session at this point in time. So that's point two in this slide and the submissions close on midnight uh, the 23rd of February. So that's in 11 days. Uh, the judging period will go until the 4th of March and then we've got the award ceremony at Drupal South Sydney in the afternoon of the 20th of March. The project you submit. Um, so the website you put forward needs to represent new work uh, in the 23-24 year or um, a project um, that has had major updates um, in, in that same period. And that's recognising sort of the, the agile workflow that a lot of us are working to as we consistently improve uh, the works that we do for our clients. Um, the website does need to be live. Also, the major feature enhancement has to be live as well at the time of the ceremony. And the website has to be a Drupal project. Um, so I encourage you to review the submission form. There are six uh, questions for you to answer. Um, there is a character limit on each question. Mike, is that 
the same this year? It's 10,000 characters per, per field? Yep, yep. And I would say if anyone finds that they're hitting that limit to, to let us know and, and we can we can certainly review that. Thank you. Okay, so just some tips, um, and I'll put this maybe on the Drupal South uh, Awards channel that I've just created uh, recently, um, these links. So there's uh, two links for you to check out for a bit of background research. Um, so one is the, the Splash Awards uh, website, which is the International Awards um, one. And then we've also got a YouTube video um, from the awards ceremony from last year in Wellington. So prepare your submission. Uh, we have got a template that's available. Um, so I'm happy to share that uh, with any attendees after this session. So please just uh, make a note to contact us with your email if you would like that template. Um, and I, we can talk about contact details um, after this presentation. Um, so although the template's available and I can't exactly remember, but I'm pretty sure it's a Google Doc, um, you do need to actually provide your submission and answers on the online form. So you'll have to transcribe that through over to your online form if you're using the template. Submissions tips. Uh, review the categories and select the ones that best fit for your project. You may submit the same project in different categories if the category applies, but remember to adjust your submission to provide context for that category. Answer all of the questions. Um, and I've talked about the word limit already. Um, so, and as, as Mike said, that if you're hitting that max, you know, you need to become, to be, just consider a bit more about how you can become a bit more succinct and clear in your answer. Read the questions in detail and take notes on the key points you need to answer. Consider sharing the workload. Um, get team members to answer the key points questions that are relevant to them and set a deadline. Revise the answers, be clear and succinct. Um, spend time structuring your reasons for why you think your project is innovative, interesting and awesome. Make sure there is a clear story for a judge to follow. Remember the judges will be looking at many submissions, so make efforts to make your one stand out. Ensure the submission fits your agency tone and make it personal and unique. Review the answers against the questions and ask yourself, have I answered the question? Get fresh eyes on the submission, share it with your team and ask for feedback. Ask them to let you know if anything has been missed out, is the submission a compelling story argument and incorporate any feedback that you receive. So one of the important things about these awards is that you need to tell your client that you're submitting um, and include them in the process. The client must agree to the submission. You will see on the submission form that we ask for the client contact details and we do contact each client um, to make sure that they've approved the submission. Um, and so if you're engaging with your client, it's a good opportunity to ask them for a testimonial, which you can include in your submission as well. Okay, so that is the submission. I mean, the, the presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Rory. Hey, Julia, thank Hi. you very much for that. Um, I just had a question that I don't think you've covered, but for a site that might be behind, a, well, the vast majority of the sites behind a username password and isn't public facing per se, is that still something we could submit, obviously, with the understanding that we would have to get you some way of logging in? Yes, yeah, so, um, so there'll, there'll be a few challenges there. Uh, so number one, with the online form, I don't think there's anywhere to upload images at the moment, so we might have to, might go back and have a look at that potentially. The other thing is that the judges need to be able to access the website to review and assess it. So are you saying you'll be able to give them access or? Um, I can't confirm anything, but I think, mm -hmm. you know, the understanding would be if we were submitting a site that required a username and password, we would be able to set up a, a judging account. Okay. But does that sound like it's within the realm of possibilities? Mike, what do you think? Yeah, I think it, it needs to be, just to reiterate that caveat, it needs to be a finished site 
and you need to give the judges access to it, then I think that's fine. 